The Children's Moon by Carmen Agraditi, illustrated by Jim LaMarche. There once was a time when the sun alone ruled the day, the moon graced the night, and little children were put firmly to bed before sunset. But one dawn, as the moon slipped out of the sky, she heard laughter. It was high and sweet, like the daintiest of silver bells. She paused. What is that sound? Hurry, the sun urged her along. The children are waking, and it's my turn to shine. So the moon glided away in a shimmering trail of moon dust. That dusk, when they met again, the moon could scarcely contain herself. Oh, do, do, do tell me about the children, won't you? Surely you've seen them, huffed the sun. Only by moonlight, she reminded him. Well, said the sun, they are small and fast and make a great deal of noise, but they do love drawing pictures of me. They never see me, sighed the moon, unless you'd let me come out by day. Certainly not, snapped the sun. You know the rules. The day is mine. The night is yours. Ugh, a pity, said the moon. I've often wondered how the world would look aglow in your golden rays. This last comment seemed to please him. He wasn't a bad fellow, you see, just so very grand and, well, brilliant. And so the sun told the moon of a world of fierce light and vibrant colors, of glittering lakes, misty jungles, and herds of animals that flowed like water across endless savannas. He described waking rivers that stretched to the sea, gleaming cities and the people who toiled in them, and bees abuzz with their own industry. Last, he told her of adoring sunflowers that followed his every move across the sky. And that, he said, is the world by day. Before the moon could speak, the sun had vanished. The following dawn, the moon couldn't wait to see her friend. As he passed, she called after him. Would you like to know how the world looks by night? No, I would not, groan the sun, but I can see that you are determined to tell me. With delight, she told him about moonflowers and the ribbon-like aurora borealis. She described screech owls and bats. She waxed joyful as she spoke of fireflies and seas aglow with plankton, until she realized her friend was no longer listening. Yet the most wondrous of all are the stars. At once, the sun's interest flickered. Wait, what? Stars, you say? Oh, said the moon, as if it was now of little interest to her. Stars are suns, just like you. Preposterous, he shouted. Wouldn't I have seen these other suns? Would you? The moon's tone was kind. Oh, my light chases away the night. I can't see them. The poor sun seemed quite undone. Of course, said the moon, there is a way, but we'd have to work together. And as the moon gently eclipsed her friend, the sun saw not a thousand, not a million, nor a billion, nor a trillion, but a universe of countless stars. Suns, much like himself, some dying, some newly born. And if he felt less grand, he also felt a little less lonely. Thank you, the sun whispered. Now, sang the moon, will you please, 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 with a comet on top, let me see the children? The sun nodded his fiery head. Of course, but it's a poor trade, my friend. I've seen the stars. A sudden thought turned the moon quite blue. How will the children see me with you in the sky? Because I will shine on you as never before, bowed her friend. And as the moon's light grew bold and bolder still, she heard a sound like the daintiest of silver bells. And the children, whose small faces shone like stars, were moonstruck. 
May I come again? whispered the moon. They'd never forgive me if you didn't, replied her friend. And that is why, when she appears by day, when even the youngest child is awake to see her, she is called the children's moon.